Wait, we're live. All right, Shalom. This is the ISUPK under Commanding General Yohanna. Um, for those of you that are new to the class, we teach that according to the according to the Bible and history, that blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians are the real Israelites, are the real Jews, man. You know, in um, the Bible, read Deuteronomy chapter. 28 and you're going to find out that the people that were sold in the transatlantic slave trade they are the real israelites the so-called native americans and the hispanics those are the real israelites and we got the proof we got the archaeology we got the history so we can show you that without a shadow of a doubt man so as us being being the israelites you know, the Bible talks about everything we as black people go all through. You know, many people think that um, the Bible, it doesn't mention the life of a black man at all. And that is a lie, man. The same Bible that everyone claims they read, that side that they claim they read, does talk about black life. It talks, yeah. about, black, it talks about black lives more than any lives. Why? Because God only cares about those black lives, man. You know, Osla, in the Bible, it talks about black people hating each other, a black man leaving his family. It talks about, you know, um, our young ones will be wild on the streets. That is in the Bible, man. Now, some of you online may be saying, well, why don't we know this? Why is this information not told to us? in religion and the reason being is because religion doesn't know the bible man your pastor at church he or she because now a woman does the job too now allegedly they do not know the bible and that's where we as a race of people fall short we right. want answers from people that don't have the answers we go to them like listen you know in the bible i know it must be it must be talking about me somewhere. And we believe it, man. And because the lack of understanding he or she has, they go, no, it's not talking about you, man. You're talking about dying, going to heaven, sing and dance. But no one never discusses what the Bible is really about, man. And what yeah. is the Bible really about black lives, man? Black, Hispanic, and native Indian lives. That's what the Bible's talking about. And the UPK, that's what we, I mean, that's what we say. Not because, you know, we got great imaginations. It's because the Bible says so. God says so, man. So in the UPK, in the UK, we do have a school. The address is 394 Lodge Road, postcode B185PW. I'll say the address one more time. 394 Lodge Road. Postcode B eighteen five PW, and at um, this school we teach classes three times a week, and then um, on the Friday we have a radio show. So um, the schedule is on um, the Monday uh, we do a history class, which is done by Officer Karafia. You know, powerful history on black soldiers that fought in World War One and the Second World War as well, and many things that us in the UK, we don't know. Then um, you got the Wednesday class done by Officer Dungabar, which is the law class, where it goes into the laws on the Bible, whether it's whether it's brotherhood, whether, you know, it's any law in the Bible, Officer Dungabar expounds on it and breaks it down so that it's easy to understand. Then today, um, the Thursday class, is the scripture breakdown class, meaning if there's any scriptures you need breaking down, then this is where you ask. If there's any, you know, understandings, like for argument's sake, John 3.16, you believe, you know, God so loved the world, literally means the whole world. This being a scripture breakdown class, we'll break it down in the Bible to show you that God does not love the whole world as what you think it means. 
So when that's right. what we do in the scripture breakdown class. Then on the Friday, we have On The Ends. Uh, that is a radio show, you know, um, set up by Officer Karafia. And, you know, um, Captain Mashak, you know what I mean? Um, he is in the class, of course, you know what I mean? Lots of edification, lots of relevant subjects as well. And, you know what I mean? Um, a few weeks ago, had a Rasta man um, on there talking about the wind rush. Had um, a pastor about which genre is more hazardous, gospel or grime. So, you know, we're um, definitely on the ends. Great radio show as well, man. So, um, with that, we're going to get into um, the class. All right. Um, for those of you that don't know, I mean, some of you may know of him or may have heard of him. A man called Sean Burr Ailey. Um, I believe he's um, not in um, the labor. He's, um, anyway, he's in one of them. He's in one of the groups. So now, you know, over the weekend, you know, there's been a lot of black, um, black live protest and um we're going to get into the article of what he said so that no one thinks i'm trying to twist up what he said and what he said shows how much that the rich of black people hate the poor of 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 us you know mo a lot of us think well seeing as he or she may be rich now uh, Shalom, how about Shimmy? How about Shai? Most I impressed. All right. So, yeah. So, now um, a lot of us think, well, they're rich now, but surely they don't forget. And here's the issue they do, man. Many of the rich of us forget about those that aren't rich. They forget about us and think, whenever we're upset, we're just emotional. Whenever our voice ain't being heard, we're just dumb. And that's the problem uh, of which are blacks and Hispanics. Um, the poor of us, they neglect, they reject and think they're just moaning. Look at me, man. Look at me and the riches I have. If I, I did it, anyways. Like, uh, if I did it, they can do it too. And life ain't so up like that. What a lot of them don't understand is they are just one rich black person, one rich his, Hispanic, and they are lucky. It's not that, you know, everything's out there, it's, it's all yours. They don't understand that they are lucky. And with the luck that they got, it's mandatory that they should help those that ain't so lucky. Right. It's mandatory to help those that, don't, that, you know what I mean, haven't had the same doors open to them like yourself. So if you could uh, read the article. Shalom. So the, um, the mail online. My my brave Jamaican grandfather fought for Winston Churchill. I'm glad he didn't live to see the rioters doggery, right, Sean Bailey. So imagine that all the protests on the weekend. This is a black man, mind you, as well, saying that you know his that his granddad would would be rock all in in his grave. That was it. I don't want to misquote what he said. So he's saying that his granddad, if he would have seen how what black people were doing on the weekend, his granddad would have, would be upset, man. And then to even top it off, because my granddad fought for Winston Churchill, like that's an honor. Like, you know, that is something to be proud of. Cool. When when we're going to get into another article in a bit, that even Winston Churchill, he didn't like black people either. We showed you that what this man is saying right here, it, it's a very uneducated statement. Because right. if his granddad really knew what he thought of him, maybe he wouldn't fight in the World War. 
Maybe he probably would have stayed in Jamaica. But here's the thing, man. A lot of us, I mean, no disrespect. We don't know certain things that we are meant to know. We don't know who our enemy is. And right. that's always the problem, man. England is an enemy to black people. And many, many West Indians fought in World War I and the Second World War like as if we achieved something and we was fighting for the enemy, man. And likewise, this man here, he's saying like, you know, my granddad, he fought like it means something. And how do you know it doesn't mean anything? Because even though we're in the UK, what, what's happening? We are oppressed, man. We're dying. Police, har police harassment showing that all that fighting didn't mean nothing to our oppressor, but it meant everything to us. In right. our mind, in our minds, like yeah, we fought in World War Two. We, you know I mean we helped? And in the oppressor's mind, it's like so big deal. Now you can go back home, man. But um, uh, read on. The statue of Winston Churchill was dubbed with graffiti during the Black Lives Matter protests in London. Uh -huh. During the darkest days of the Second World War, my grandfather volunteered to leave his home in Jamaica and put on uniform to join the British Army and fight to eradicate Nazism and intolerance from Europe. So now, what's wrong with what he's saying here? With the protests on the weekend, it's for Black Lives, man. It's for black lives like you, man. You are a black man. And you're trying to go against it. Like as if uh, you ain't black. Like as if the people that are upset ain't you, man. And that's the problem. And then, you know, my granddad left Jamaica. Like that means something, man. Bro. It doesn't mean nothing. Let me tell you something. In my family, there's, there's a relative of mine. He also fought in a World War One. And yes, he did, but I'm not saying it as a badge of honor. He fought for a country that didn't even like him, man. Cool. He fought for a nation that fought very little of him. And that's the truth. It's nothing emotional. It is what it is. So you're like, you're my granddad. He left Jamaica like it means something, man. Let me tell you something. No bombs weren't landing on Jamaica, man. Cool. We left a land that um, the Nazis didn't even want and left to go into um, a world war zone to die for a nation that did, that did not even like us anyway, man. That's uh, true. Reader. Oh, sorry, um, just to update, Sean Burr Ailey, um, he's of the party, which is of, which is of Burr Aris Johnson. So you know what I mean? So he's basically helping his cause, man. Uh, what's it called? A conservative. So yeah, so now um, that's what Sean Bailey is, man. And you know what I mean? So now, um, sorry, just a um, read on. Thousands of other boys and young men did the same. Journey from the Caribbean and many other parts of the British Empire. Answering an emotional summons to defeat the greatest evil of the last century. And, and imagine that. So he's calling the uh, Arts the greatest um, evil. So what about England? Ain't they too? In your own time, you can look up, you can get the map of the great British Empire and they killed, colonized everywhere they went, man. What yeah. about Baltimore? So quick to say, my dad left Jamaica to fight and beat the uh, Arses because for their great evil. But what about England, man? Hasn't Eng doesn't England have an evil history too? They're past evil. So you're bringing up one white race. But what about the other, man? What about the other that made your granddad in Jamaica work for 400 years? That's right. What about that evil, Sean Bailey? Uh, read on. Um, despite the heavy fire his unit took in Italy, Granddad mercifully survived the war and went back home to Jamaica. Um, he has since died 
And in some ways, I am glad he did not have to live to see this weekend's shameful events in Whitehall and Parliament Square. So now imagine that, meaning with the Black Lives Matter, he calls it shameful, meaning it's shameful for black people to march. It's shameful for a black man to be upset. Like my granddad, after all what he done for England, if he was alive, he would have been ashamed, man. Ashamed of what? Black people being upset. Black people wanting to be heard. And that's the problem, man. The rich of us hate those that ain't rich. The poor of us. They hate us where what they're saying doesn't even make sense. And right. show that it doesn't know what it's on about. If you don't believe me, research it. After the Second World War was done, there was black people in the UK. And what did the whites say unto them? Look, man, the war is finished. It's about time you go home. So he's acting like after the war, his granddad had some nice life in England. And historically, oh. historically, that is inaccurate. Historically, that would have not happened. Historically, his granddad would have helped in the war, stayed in England, and suffered racial abuse to the day that he died. That's right. That, That's right. that is the reality of it. But again, Sean Bailey is living a lie, man. Um, is there any more on that? Don't, don't want to rinse it dry. Like many Caribbean soldiers... He was proud to have fought under a government led by Winston Churchill. So now, you know what I mean? His granddad fought under Winston Churchill. Now, um, there's another article. Maybe instead of defending England and defending, you know, that man there, you might want to know some things about him before you defend him, man. Before you bring him up like as if your granddad fighting for him was something great, man. Now, listen... Right. I'm not knocking his granddad. I don't know his granddad. But, you mean, of course, he's a descendant of his granddad. And surely, with the information of today, he should know better, man. He should know better. You mean, you, you're like, your granddad did what he did. He didn't know. But surely, you know, man, Sean Bailey. Right. And the black man, surely, you know, man, with the information of the internet, with your mean everything on your phone, man. You know what I mean? You can get information from your phone and you don't know these things. So if you could. Or oh, now this again, another article. And it's nothing I wrote, man. This is a, this is from the BBC News, man, about Winston Churchill. And we're gonna see some amazing facts about this man that um Sean Bailey's granddad for Ought for uh, read that for me. Ten greatest controversies of Winston Churchill's career. The UK is marketing the 50th anniversary of the death of Winston Churchill. He is regarded by many as the greatest Britain ever, but for some, he remains an intensely controversial figure. So now, in the UK, by some people, he's regarded as the greatest Britain ever, and. By some, he's also controversial as well. And we're going to find out why. We're going to find out why some people have a controversy with him. Uh, read on. During Britain's darkest hours in World War II, Churchill's leadership was vital in maintaining morale and leading the country to eventual victory over Nazi Germany. So now, again... Regarding this, yes, under his command, England did win the Second World War. But again, no one mentions the West Indians that ever fought, man. You know what I mean? To find out if black people fought in them wars, you have to buy books specifically on that. But any regular history book doesn't even mention them. And I've right. got loads of them. I, listen, I've got loads of them. And they don't mention... The soldiers from the West Indies don't mention wow. you know I mean the soldiers from Trinidad, Jamaica, Guyana, Montserrat, Tobago never mentions any of them. You know what I mean, and if you don't know this history, naturally 
what would come into your mind is it was a white and white war when that's not true, man. Many black soldiers, you know what I mean, they risked their lives, done many courageous acts to make England win, man. To give England the victory, but no one talks about that. Uh, read right. that. In 2002, Churchill saw off the likes of Shakespeare, Darwin, and Brunel to be voted up the greatest ever Britain. But in a career spanning of seven years, he had more than few moments of controversy. There is a danger in Churchill's gaining and pure, purely icon status because the actual, the actual icon here, that actually takes away from his, his humanity, says Alan Packwood. The, so now, um, that last part of there is referencing what another man said that although people describe him as the greatest Britain, there's some things that, you know I mean, if you research it, you would think otherwise. You would think twice, man. Right. Good to see you in, man. Good to see you in, man. Let's get back to it. Sorry, let me just switch. Okay, again. Yeah, yeah, come. So, come. He is the. He is this incredibly complex contradictory and larger than life human being and wrestled with these contradictions during his lifetime. So now, what does it mean by he wrestled with these contradictions in his lifetime? Meaning, when people write history about him, they try so hard to make him seem like the greatest guy, but there's contradictions. Historically, there's things that no one can deny about this man. So uh, uh, makes it like Winston Churchill is the greatest Britain ever. There's clearly things that are contradictory. Things that you would go, is he really the greatest Brit when he said things like this? When he done things like this? And we're going to find out one of them. Now, on this list, there's about 11 or 10, if I'm correct. But now, we're going to see what the first one is. Meaning now, if this is the top of the list, meaning this is the main one that basically contradicts him, uh, read that for me. Views on race. In April last year, Labour candidate Benjamin Whittingham tweeted that Churchill was a racist and a that, white supremacist. That he was what? A racist and a white supremacist. So this man, he was a racist. Uh, Meaning he was racist, meaning he didn't like black people, Sean Bird. Right. Meaning your granddad that fought for um him, he was under his command, he didn't like him. Right. Historically, this man here, Winston, he is a racist on documents, on paper, on history, man. This man was a racist and a white Sue. Premises, meaning he thought the white race was the best. And this is on documents. This is fact. It's not, you know, a philosophy where it can be debated, where it's debatable, whether, you know what I mean, people think, well, there's no evidence. This is documented that he was a racist and a white Sioux premises. Meaning he thought his race was supreme above every other race. Winston Churchill, right here, man. The same man that Sean Bailey's granddad for ought for. But why didn't he bring up this part, man? Maybe if his granddad knew this, he wouldn't have left Jamaica and thought, it would go, well, why am I fighting for someone who doesn't even like me? Come on. Why did many of us fight for an oppressor that didn't like us? But let's read on. Go on. Sir Nicholas Soames Churchill's grandson was outraged 
and Whittingham's conservative opponent Ben Wallace labeled the comments ignorant and incredibly insulting. Uh -huh. The tweet was deleted and the Labour Party said it does not represent the view of the Labour Party. He apologised undeservedly if it caused any offence. There, so, so now the person that you mean said that he was a racist, they made him apologise. But now you're going to understand that what this man said was right and that really there was no reason to apologise. So now this is um, a quote right here. So now when people go, you know, well, he did apologise. He This individual that they're talking about had no reason to. Um, let's read that. In 1937. In 1937, he told the Palestine Royal Commission, I do not admit, for instance, that a great wrong has been done to the Red Indians of America or the Blacks of Australia. I do not admit that a wrong has been done to these people by the fact that a stronger race and a higher race a more worldly wise race, to put it that way, has come and taken their place. Imagine that. So, you know, he didn't apologize about the Red Indians. You know what I mean? About, um, about um, uh, Gad. He didn't apologize. It's like, no. Like, why should I apologize? You know, ain't nothing wrong that a wiser race, a smarter race just took their place. So what did he think about black people, man? Uh, He's saying that we are a stronger race, that white people are a wiser race. So he didn't apologize for nothing. Anytime any atrocity was, but anytime someone mentioned an atrocity, he's like, I'm not apologizing. It happened. A stronger race beat them, a wiser race beat them. And how come many West Indians don't know this, man? How come many of us, I'm not saying no one doesn't know, but how come amongst us blacks and Hispanics, we don't know this about him? This is what he said. This is what he told them, man, the um, Royal Commission, that I'm not apologizing. It happened that a stronger race, a wiser race, just took their place. So he's saying, like, well, what, like, if you want me to apologize, then forget about it, man. You know, that happened. What, um, what, there's a name for it. It's um, the manifest the destiny, meaning what happened, it was meant to happen. And that's what he's saying. He's saying, why should I apologize when we are the smarter race? Us white people are the wiser race. So it happened. And that's what he says, man. And there's Sean Bailey, you know, if my granddad saw the protests on the weekend, he was so disappointed. He fought in World War, fought for Winston Churchill, not knowing what he would have thought of his granddad, man. That's right. Not knowing what, if he was around him, what he would have said to him, what he right. would have thought to him, man. But instead, you know what I mean? If you don't know, you believe fighting under his command is an achievement. Fighting under his command means something, and it doesn't mean anything at all, man. That's right. It doesn't mean anything yeah. at all, man. You know what I mean? And it's, it's sad. You know, like, I think about this a lot, that in those times, many West Indians joined the army thinking, you know, yeah, man, I'm, I'm achieving something. I'm doing something. To know that we was fighting under the command of a racist that didn't like us anyway. All it was was just people to help the fight. You know what I mean? Why have less when you can have more? But did that mean they valued us? Did that mean they cared about us? No, they didn't, man. Cool. Um, any more on the article? That was it. No, no, no. That's it then. All right, let's get in um, the Bible. Let's get um, Proverbs. 31 and 8. Okay, well, okay. Hey, uh, Trooper Alban, um, you got you got a sword? Uh, 
it's lucky and nice. Some my dad. I only have the one on my phone. I'm using my that's phone. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. Uh, I know, sir. All right, let's go. Let's grab uh, thirty-one. Stuck it. Uh, let's grab Proverbs thirty-one and eight. Hmm. Gone. I got it. I can't. More sign, Christ. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter thirty-one and verse eight. Open thy mouth for the dump in the for the dump in the cows of all is. Of all such as uh, appointment to destruction. Uh -huh, yeah, uh, read on. Keep on going. Uh, Khan, please. Open thy mouth, judge righteousness. righteousness. What did the Bible say? So now it says, open, open thy mouth, Saki. Open thy mouth and judge righteously, man. What Sean Bailey did right there, that's not judging righteously. Cool. Black people are upset. Uh, they're, they're, they're out there, man. You mean, in the knowledge of the world, you mean, that's the fight? Black people want to be heard, and he opened his mouth and did not judge righteously. Talking about, you know, his granddad would have been upset with what he would have seen over the weekend, man. And that's the problem. The people that so-called are meant to direct us, lead us, they don't judge righteously. Sean Bain right. is not judging righteously. David Le Ami does not judge does not judge righteously. Many of us that think you know we're black and yeah, I'm gonna you know what I mean get up in the house of lords. When they get there, they don't judge righteously. What they do is they look down on us like oh look at them, always complaining, always moaning. Look at me, I'm in the house of lords. I speak some great English. And guess what? When we were at there on the weekend, oh, look at that, man. My granddad fought in the Second World War. He would be disgraced if he would have seen what was going on. He would have been disgraced by, you know, all the black people packing up London, packing up Leicester, Manchester. And that's the problem right there, man. Uh, read on. And plead the cause of the poor and the need. And plead the cause of the poor man. Meaning, if a poor man has a cause, a cause, hear it, man. Don't reject him. Don't neglect him because he's poor. He or she is poor. If you lead blacks Hear their cause, plead it, go, what's wrong? What's happened? How can I help, man? Me being rich, me that claims I lead you, let me hear what you got to say. But you don't go, that is disgraceful. That march, that protest, that is disgraceful. And you never even heard the cause, man. You don't know why we're doing it. You know what I mean? Growing up in the UK, police harass black people, man. It's, right. not, it's not some black myth that, you know, people like to make out, like, always blaming the police. Listen, police harass black people. It's, you know what I mean? Everyone's got Facebook. Watch the videos where, as a black man, you cannot be doing nothing. You can be walking home and, you know, stop and search, stop and frisk. And a policeman is harassing you and you, when you're asking him why, what's happened, you get no reason why. You don't know why. And it is oh. because you are a black man. You know what I mean? Everyone likes to deny it. No, maybe the policeman's just concerned. Maybe he's just doing his job. Maybe, you know, there's something you don't know and that is not the truth, man. Right. Something people want to run away from and the fact is, that you are a black man and the policeman is searching you simply because of the color of your skin, man. That's that right. is the reason why. That's right. That is the reason why, man. That's right. Digest it. Accept it, man. You know, some people go, well, no one really knows. You can't say 
a policeman stop you because you're black? Yes, you can, man. Because, because it's so obvious. So when you ask him, okay, so what offence has been done? What crime has been committed? And they can't even tell you. Why? Because nothing's wrong. His board, you're a black man. In his racist mind, it makes sense. That is why, man. Uh, read on. Uh, there's the book of Proverbs, chapter 31 and verse 10. Oh, so like, so like, no, no, um, so like, um, not verse 10. We, we read verse 8 and 9. Um, yeah. that is Suwab. All right, let's get Psalms 82 and 3. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse 3. Defend the door, defend the poor and the fatherless. And now Do listen now. It's like now. Now that is in the Bible. As um, uh, a leader, you're supposed to defend who? The poor man. Defend them. Don't beat them down. Don't go, you know, my granddad would be disgraced at what we're doing. The Bible says defend the poor man. If you claim you lead blacks, Black people, defend them then, man. You can't want to lead and then bring them down. You can't want to lead and be their voice and then on the other side, rip them down and say what they're doing is disgraceful. What they're doing, it's embarrassing, man. That's right. If you speak up for them, defend them. You can't speak up for them and, oh, they're disgraceful. And here's the thing, he's not speaking up for us, man. Right. Why, if he was, then what happened on the weekend, it wouldn't be a disgrace. It wouldn't be shameful. <coughs> you know, well, damn, black people want to be heard, man. Damn, you know what I mean? As a black man growing up in England, I'm sure he knows how it feels. He wasn't rich overnight. I'm sure police have stopped and harassed him. Oh, What's that show on um, ITV? Um, the Chase. What happened to um, the brother on there, man? Is the article about him as well? Um, the oh, Chase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So if you can, if you can um, get that for me as well. So it's not just a rich. So it doesn't just happen to black people that ain't rich. Even the rich of us get harassed by the police I got you no, sir. yeah we, we get that as well but yeah you're supposed to defend us man not tear us down and I'm ashamed of what happened on the weekend and guess what black people didn't do anything man all we done was march no justice no peace what do we want justice when do we want it now a lot of the vandalism was done by who white people man I didn't tear down that statue of Edward Kerr Olsen. That was white people. I've seen the video. White people got the ropes, roped it up. You know I mean, brung it down. That's not black people at all, man. So if you are ashamed, then guess what? You are ashamed at the wrong people, man. That's right. You are ashamed at the wrong race because black people didn't vandalize anything, man. Black people didn't tear down anything. You know what I mean? All what black people done was held signs, man. And wore, right. and guess what? And the wore that face mask. That's all we did, man. Uh, read on. Come. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. And there, man, do, do justice to the afflicted, man. What people are afflicted black people man we are afflicted but in a land that isn't ours being afflicted man police harassing us that is an affliction man struggling to make ends meet that is an affliction man black people educated beyond their mind and can't even get the job they want that is an affliction man yeah. imagine a black man he put in your ear go to college go to uni and listen 
I'm not saying don't go to college, don't go to uni. In the UPK, we want you to go to college. We uh, want you to go to uni. We want you to have all the degrees you can, man. You know what I mean? Don't think we're teaching that you should not. You should, man. Get as educated in this world as you can. And imagine this. From young, black people have been told education is the key, man. From when I was 15, you know, listen, black man, education is the key, man. You can do it if you put your mind to it, man. If you can see and you believe it, you can do it, man. That's what I've been told, man. And imagine there's black people that been to uni, you know what I mean, got their bachelor degree, got, you know what I mean, got damn their, the highest of the highest. And then when you do all that, you will apply for a job. And when they see you're black, you don't get the job, not because you ain't qualified, but because you're black. That is an affliction right there, man. Right. Imagine that for years they put in your mind education is the key, and guess what? Education is good. Don't think I'm saying it's not, but then when you do as they say, they won't even give you the, the job anyway, man. They say, Well, you know, to stop you know the issues that you have, get educated, go to college, and many of us do, man. In my time, many black people filled up damn there everywhere, colleges doing construction, doing this. And I meet a lot of them. And guess what? I'm one of them too, man. And a lot mm -hmm. of times you apply for stuff and you don't get it because you're black. You go into this view, the CU walking go, oh, it's black. Yeah, you know, not quite, man. And you know, man, you ain't no, you ain't no idiot. You know you ain't got it because you're a black man, man. So we do what society says all the time, and it doesn't work out for us. Why? Because we are the afflicted that the Bible's talking about, man. Right. The Bible is talking about one race of people, and who is that afflicted? We are, man. We do everything. We give our oppressor everything, man. We do everything that he says, and then guess what? He gets shoved in our face. We give him everything, and we do everything, and at the end of it, it's just not enough. Uh, read on. Can of the one can. The of the poor and the needy. Read them out of the hand of the wicked. And, so that's what we, so, and, and that's what we do. In the UPK, we rend blacks and Hispanics out of the hand of the wicked man. Meaning we get them out of their hand. Right now, as a nation, we are in his hand, man. We're jumping around for him. We're as his lapdog just doing what he wants, man. Believing every lie that he told us. And what do we do at the UPK? Rent them out of, out of his hand. Whether it's his religion, whether it's his philosophy, whatever it is, we rent him out of our hand. Uh, funny enough, I just got an um, article sent to me. The same black man on the train, he got removed because police thought he was a criminal. Um, I believe I was here. Sean Wallace. Oh, sorry, that's the guy off um, the chase. Oh, what's that? Oh, Sean Bay, Sean Wallace. All right. Um, yeah, uh, read on. Canada one can. Verse five. They know not. Neither will they understand. And that's they the problem. On... Now, this part talking about us, we know not. Neither do we understand, man. We know not. Neither do we understand. Meaning, while we're in our oppressor's hand, we don't know that we are in his hand. And sometimes we blame each other not knowing that it's our oppressor playing with us, man. Our yeah. oppressor mentally messing with us and we blame each other. You know, some black people say we are lazy and black people ain't lazy, man. You mean black people work the hardest in the UK? Black people give their all in England. And guess what? We are just in our oppressor's hand to where he decides if we prosper or we don't, man. And we know not, we know not that the situation of our race 
it's not our fault. We know not that someone made us poor. Our oppressor, the white man, made us poor. The white man made us hate each other. The white man has us in Handsworth, Moss Side, everywhere we are, killing each other. It's not by, it's not by us. It's not that we're evil and bad. These things are designed for us to be that way, man. That's if you right. take away a nation's economics, you take away someone's wealth, you take away any grant that they can receive, <laughs> when, when their back's up against the wall, naturally what happens? You start to look on each other. Like, well, yeah. damn, I ain't got no money. He does. A lot of what we do is by design. It's not that we're evil. It's not that, you know, just bad black people, man. They're just naturally born to kill each other. We are naturally born to hate each other. We are in our enemy's hand. And that's what Psalm said. We know not, man. We don't, we don't know that it's not our fault. We don't know that we are in um, the oppressor's hand. We don't. Another one can. They walk in darkness. All the foundation of the earth are out of course. All right. So I, now, so like, so now we walk in darkness. What does darkness symbolize? Ignorance, man. Meaning we don't know. As a nation, we walk in darkness. You know I mean if a man is bragging about his granddad that fought in um, the world wars, that is darkness right there, man. Yeah. If a man is following a slave religion. That is darkness, man. Christianity is a slave religion. And That's we are right. in darkness, man. We're in the mosque. We are in darkness, serving the God of another race of people, looking up to them and looking up to their race as they are the people of God, man. You walk in darkness and the foundations are out of course, of course. What was that mean? Meaning, what meaning? On the base of what we have, that's wrong. It's out of course. And what are some of the foundations that we have, man? Religion, politics. If them things are wrong, then as a nation, we can't rise up if our base is wrong, man. If our base is on my granddad fought in World War I, man, and what you lot are doing, he would be ashamed of. That foundation is out of course, man. Sean Bailey's foundation is out of course, man. Many, all of our foundations, they're out of course. We trust in Christianity, Islam, Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventists. And I know many of us follow these religions ignorantly, but the truth is these religions are out of course for us, man. And that's why we can't build, that's why we can't have nothing. Because if the foundation is wrong, then naturally you can't construct nothing on top of it. Reader, Tana the one can verse six. I have said, Ye are God, and all of you are children of the Most High. Uh -huh. But ye, but ye shall be, but she, but ye shall die like men, and, the Bible and fall says, like one. I got yeah, no sweat. So now, this is God speaking, God saying that we are gods. Now, what does God mean? Does anyone know? Is it meaning God like the Most High, or is it meaning something else? Uh, no, also it's um Alahayim, which means the power. A power, a judge, someone who's in a high state, man. God saying we are gods. We're meant to rule the earth as a black man. We're meant to judge the earth, but because we're in our oppressor's hand, we walk in darkness. We shall die like, like, uh, what does it say? Die like the what? Like men. Like men. Meaning, all right, imagine this as a God or as a judge. How are we meant to die? Let's look at the an analogy. Imagine someone rich, someone that owns lands, someone that, you know, rules the earth. How is someone that rules the earth, how are they meant to die? Of old age, a long fulfilling life. Give that a hand. <laughs> Someone who's rich, naturally, they die of old age with their kids around them, grandkids, you know what I mean? All their relatives. 
God saying, we are meant to die like that, but we die like men. What do the men represent? The other races, man. Mm-hmm. Meaning, we die by drug overdoses, drug overdoses, getting stabbed to death, shot to death. You know what I mean? Dying behind bars doing 35 years, man. God says we are gods, but because we're not following our God, we die like men. We die doing 35 years behind bars, man. Do you know how yeah. oppressing? Do you know how oppressing that is? Imagine that, man. You mean some of, some of us are sad outside, and to spend 35 years waking up, eating some lunch, going to the gym, going back in your bed, waking up, eating your breakfast, going back in the cell. You mean you might see your mom one day? That is dying like men, man. And God says, black man, Hispanic man, we are not meant to die that way. Right. Sure. The one seven I lost. Uh, yes, I got it. And fall like one of the princes. And fall like one of the princes, man. Meaning we're not gonna die how we're meant to die, man. Like a prince. Just imagine, like you know I mean a prince. He's not the god. And now with him, he's not guaranteed to die like a judgment. Meaning the way how we're dying, it's not right. And God's saying because our foundation is wrong, we're in our oppressor's hand, we're living in darkness. This is the reason why we die like we die. And why am I going here? Because many people think how black people live or how we live is our fault. And it is not our fault, man. The oppressor makes us poor. The oppressor makes sure that we don't have enough to sustain ourselves. You know, many people in England go, look, man, um, look around. Indians got shops. The Polish got shops. And they go, enough of black people. We ain't got nothing. It shows how lazy we are. That is a lie, man. That is a, that is a bold-faced lie. Do you know what happens? East Indians get loans from the government, man, grants. The Polish get grants from um, the government. And why? Because they want them to have their own shops. They're like, listen, of course, your race, you have a way of living. And we want to promote that way. As a black man, you don't see any of them grants. Those loans that they get, we don't receive them at all. We are designed to be poor by the government. It's, it's, it's not, you know, we're just lazy. It's, de- it's designed that way. And that's something many people don't like to discuss. Uh, so I, um, I got um, a question online. Does that only apply to our nation? Um, well, let's read it. Um, huh? Well, okay. To be fair, all of Deuteronomy 28 refers to us as a nation. Yes, actually. All of it does. Huh? Okay, so now in Deuteronomy 28, it's talking about the Israelites, but okay, there may be some bits which another nation may have went through the same thing, but here's the issue. In the Bible, find out who it all relates to. What some people like to do is pick one part and go, yeah, but that matches some Mongoloid tribe in Mongolia. And it doesn't work like that. God is talking only to the Israelites. All of this has to match one race, man. All of it has to match one nationality. Don't pick bits and, well, you know what I mean? With the Chinese, they went through that one time in history. Equate all of it to one nation, one race. And that's how you find the Israelites. You don't just pick one part and, well, that matches them and that. It doesn't work like that. But um, let's read um, Deuteronomy. Yeah. All right. Start. We're going to go to Deuteronomy 28. But start at um, Deuteronomy 27 and 1. 27 and 1. Um, 28 or 29? 
No, no. Um, we're gonna start at Deuteronomy for, uh, first. We're gonna start at Deuteronomy twenty set set Evan and one first. Oh, got another one gone. The book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, um, uh, chapter twenty-seven and verse one. And Moses, with the elders of Israel, commanded so, the people. I got yeah. So now, this is the context right here. He's only talking to the Israelites. So now, Mer, Moses, he's only talking with the elders of Israel. Now, why is he talking with them? Because they pass it on down. So you mm. talk to the highest people, then what? That man brings it down to someone else. He brings it on to someone else. Till eventually everyone hears the message. So now keep in mind, he's only talking with Israelites. That's the context. So when you go to Deuteronomy 28, he's still talking to those same Israelites, man. Still talking with those same elders right there. Or what would happen to the Israelites if they don't follow God's laws? So um, all right, skip to Deuteronomy, was it 28 and 54? All right, let's get that. Let's get Deuteronomy 28 and 54. Deuteronomy uh, chapter 28 and verse 54. So that the so that the man that is tender among you All and right. very delicate. So so now let's break it down bit by bit. So the man that is Tender among you, meaning a man that's very a man that you know shows a lot of love, a lot of care. Meaning, even this man among you, meaning, even a man that's nice among you, a black man that's so nice, remorseful, even this man among us, read on and very delicate, his eye shall be evil towards his brother. And what's that, man? That is self-hate right there, man. That's what you call yeah. black on black crime right there. Meaning this man who's who's a, a man that shows lots of care, lots of love, even his eye is evil towards his brother. Meaning you got, got some as to us helping our brother know that his heart will be against his own, how do you combat that? So she's saying that basically Oh, okay. That's why you don't care about the march. Shalom. Okay, how do we combat that? Hmm? Also, uh, you, you have some. Well, okay, well, okay, this is how you combat it right now, man. By, you know what I mean, telling black people who they are. And once we know to love each other and know who we are, that's how you combat it. The reason why we are evil towards each other other is because we believe there's very little value of each other black right. people think we are nothing you know what I mean of course not in here but the reason why so many of us don't like each other is because we think you know our life is nothing it's worthless we're good for nothing and also because of this image right here man right yeah. imagine this in the West Indies this image was crammed down a black man's throat, man, shoved into a black man's mind to where what we have an evil eye towards each other, like you ain't this, you're black just like me. And to where yeah. that love that we are meant to have, because this image is embedded in our mind, we look and go, You ain't this, you know what? You're nothing, man. I can't stand you, man. And guess what? Now, do you want to know how, how you fight this? You understand this is garbage, man. That's you understand right. Jesus Christ is a black man just like you, man. Right. That evil eye goes away, man. You understand you're holy and that black man's holy. And that's, that's how you feel. Cool. This, yeah, this is trash. Man. That goes in the That self hate right there, man. That's right. that's how you combat Deuteronomy 28 and 54. By showing that we are holy and we don't need to be evil toward each other, man. You serve God, I serve God, 
and we both can have something great, man. We both can have the kingdom of heaven. We don't need to compete and combat against each other. You know what I mean? We all can have something, man. And that's how we fight, man. Um, any more on that? Um, I think a little bit. Con. And so he... So his eyes shall be evil towards his brother and towards the wife of his, of his bosom and mm -hmm. towards the remnant of his children which shall which he shall leave. And there, man, and that's in um, the Bible right there, man. Meaning that so even the most nicest man among us, his I will be evil towards his brother, towards his wife and his kids which he shall leave. And that is a curse that black people have in the Bible. And of course, you know what I mean? We know who the Israelites are, it's us. And that is a curse that God said would happen if we wouldn't follow him, man. But what? A man just leaves that family. The wife's like, you know what I mean? I'm pregnant. And he just, you know, abandoned ship, man. Just gone. No call. Don't, you know what I mean? You're ringing, it's not answering. You know what I mean? Calling him, trying to find out where he is, and he's gone, man. And towards his wife, and we hate each other, man. This is in the Bible, and we combat it by, like, what I said, man, by knowing who we are, by knowing that we're holy, that black life does have value. Black right. life, you know, mean that it does mean something, and we know that that combats self hate, that combats all that our slave master shoved in our ears. For 400 years. All right, I got thank you. So I take it that that's the answer. All right. All right, then uh, let's get back into it. Uh, where was we? Psalm All right. 83. All right, can't uh, throw out for that in Psalms 83. Eighty-two. Uh, that's right, yeah. Eighty-two. To read on. Uh, yes, please, brother. Uh, that is the book of Psalm, chapter eighty-two and verse seven. But ye, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. And there, man, listen to what King David said, man. It's like, God, arise, man, meaning do something. Meaning King David saw what we are going through right now, man. Right. King David saw that we was in our oppressor's hand and he's manipulating us. And then on top of that, blaming us. That it's your fault. It's your fault, man. And that's what the oppressor does. He sets up the situation and then blames you. You know what I mean? All from the 60s, black people don't what the oppressor said, man. Education is key. What happened? Black people got educated, man. Black people went to them unis, went to them colleges, and then by you, us simply being black, didn't get the job anyway, man. Right. right. You know what I mean? They say many things, you know, you are too aggressive, speak nice. And in this day and age, many people speak nice to where it's at a point where, as a black man, if you speak aggressively, you know what I mean? You're damned down, down upon um, Slacky Craft. Yeah. Um, and so this one, uh, it's a, a sister in London. I think. Yeah. yeah. So, you know what I mean? And we've done everything. We have done everything. I know what our oppressor does is just rub it in our face that, nah, I just don't want you to. And that's the problem, man. That's what Sean Bailey, as a black man, needs to understand. It's not just, you know what I mean, people are on the street having a protest because they're bored. It's because the black voice is not being heard. No one ain't caring about black lives, man. And that's why we are out there. Instead of trying to, like, you know, my granddad would be ashamed. How about, you know, we deal with the real issues 
How about you go, you know what, man? Me as a black man, being in the position I am in, how about I help them, man? How about, you know, I make, I make their voice heard, but instead, he's trying to bring us down, man. He's trying to go, he's trying to counteract it. And that's the problem right there, man. Many black people that are rich hate the poor of black people. Right. And when you want to be heard, they're against you trying to bring your voice down, mm. trying to take you down in your, in your oppression with the oppressor also as well, man. That's the problem right. that, uh, we face. So like you, sir. Yep. The, the psalm was not of David. It was from ASAP. ASAP, no, no. It's a, no, it's a song he made with him, ASAP. So it, oh. in the Bible, within the book of Psalms, it's in his songs. But of course, he didn't make it by himself. Just like even with songs that people make now. Okay, it's a lot, yeah. Thanks for that. I got you. You know, sorry, sorry. it's like even songs that like um, someone makes now. Yes, they may rap or sing on that song, but what? They have a producer. They have an engineer. You know what I mean? So likewise, it does say a psalm of um, uh, ASAP, but it is King David's song. He had help with the song, if I make okay, sense. Okay, I never knew that. Thank you. Okay, no, you know, sweat, no sweat, you know what I mean? Well, this is, you know what I mean, scripture breakdown class, so, you know what I mean? But all right, um, yeah. let's, get another one. let's get Isaiah 61 and 1. That is the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. And there, man, now, now, you know, for those of you that don't know, you know, yes, it's in the book of Isaiah, but what is Isaiah talking about? Jesus Christ, man. If you go to Luke with Christ, he reads that same verse and goes, this has happened, meaning I'm doing it. And with Christ, he came to teach us what? About um, the news, man. We're poor, we're afflicted, but it's not going to remain that way. There's some mm -hmm. good news coming, man. Sure. There's some good news coming that a day's coming where when Christ returns, black people are going to rule the earth, man. God. There's some good news that although we're poor, we are afflicted. A black king's coming. He's going to hear our voice. That's right. He's, he's going to save black people, man. And Christ said that, that, listen, I've come to bring the great news onto the meek, man. Who's the meek? We are. We've, we've been made meek by the oppression, man. Made meek where some of us just don't want to fight, man. Some of us yeah. just don't know what to do. Like, you know what? I'll give up, man. I'm, I'm just going to get high, man. You know what I mean? With, with the weed, bring it, come, man. I, I don't know what to do, man. Hmm. I was a raster in the 60s. I've now cut my locks. I went to college and, and you know, I'm, you know what I mean? Life is so hard, man. And Christ has some good news, man, for those meat people, man. Why? Because we need it. We've been made meat through oppression where we can't even fight no more, man. Hmm. We, do, we don't have the fight. Why? Because it's been beat out of us through slavery, through oppression, just through, you know, being disappointed by our oppressor so much. Uh, read on. Canada one can. He had sent me to bind up the broken heart. And that's proclaim... awesome, You know what I mean? Um, you said that we are the broken hearted. Our hearts are broken, man. Do you want to know why? Because we believed in England and England broke our heart, man. That's right. We thought, you know, I'm British and you know what I mean? England loves me. England, you know what I mean? Multiracial understanding of every race. And we find out every day that it's not true, man. That's right. That's why people are broken hearted. We're in Rotterdam believing, you know, 
Rotterdam cares about all races, and they don't, man. They only care about the white race. Right. That's yeah, what, that's right. That's right, man. And that's what, and that's what makes us brokenhearted. Wherever we are, we believe in the lies. We uphold the lies. And then what happens one day, you realize we are living a lie. Cool. You believe you have, I'm in England. England loves everyone. I will not tolerate racial abuse. And then one day you complain, you know, I'm a job, you know, someone, they said that I was a wag and everyone ignores you. And then what happens by default, that leaves us brokenhearted. We believe that life, education is the key. You know what I mean? As black people, we can't complain no more. We can't complain no more. You know what I mean? Go in college, go in uni. And yes, do go in college, do go in uni. I'm not saying not. I'm not saying not to, but you know what I mean? We believe that's the answer and you do it, man. And then one day you go for the interview and your black face walks through that door. Nah, you know, sorry. You are, uh, what does it say? You are overqualified. How does that make any sense? How can you be overqualified for a job? In your eyes, the more qualified I am, that benefits you. Right. Common sense that would benefit you, but here's the thing: I'm black. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. It's got nothing to do with being overqualified, man. All right. It's the fact of what race I am, mm-hmm. and that's what makes us brokenhearted. Man, right. We believe a lie. We're in England believing a lie. In Rotterdam believing a lie, and that's what makes us brokenhearted. But guess what? Christ came to heal us. Of that broken heart, right? Gone to proclaim liberty to the cap to the captive, and the open and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And there, man, we are bound. We are bound in alignment, bound right. in religion, bound in philosophies, bound in ideologies, and Christ came to free us from that. Chain, man. In the UPK, we ain't bound by no chain, man. We are in the UPK. Yeah. We are for, we are free, man. We That's are right. free men in here, man. Right. If we believe that lie of, of England, we are bound, man. Mm. You mean we believe them lies that you mean everyone says we are bound? Like like okay, here's the thing. Many people say things because it sounds good. But who really believes it, man? Many people say, this is England. We accept all races. We believe in all people. That sounds nice. Right. But no one really believes it. Yeah. East Indians don't believe that, man. Nope. Um, what's some other races? Um, the, um, the Kurds, the Polish. They don't believe that, man. Smarians. Right. <laughs> okay. Back in their native land... Poland is racist, badly. They got, you know, like, they got, like, the artsy groups out there that hate black people. Meanwhile, when they're in England, tell you, nah, man, you can't be racist. We accept everyone. When they are from a racist country, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. Many people say something, but they don't believe it, man. And that's why we Christ needs to break that chain, man. And it does in the on in the ICUPK every day, man. Canada one can to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And there, man. And the day. Oh, it's like, yeah. And the acceptable year of the Lord, man. I Means a time where the Lord's coming. And you mean we proclaim that day? I can't, what do we always say? That Christ is coming back, man. In the book of Acts, what, in the book of Acts, what did the angel say? The same way you seen this man go up is the same way he shall return, man. That's right. Christ is coming back. Don't let no one tell you he's not, man. Jesus Christ is coming back. He's sitting at the right-hand side of God, and he is coming back, man. That's right. Don't let no one tell you, you believe someone's coming at the sky. Yes. Hmm. The Bible ain't let me down in nothing, man. Right. So, so 
The Bible says Christ is coming back. You best believe it, man. Uh, uh, read on. And the day of vengeance of our God to conform all that mourns. To comfort all that mourn. And then, man, that's us again. We mourn. And Christ came to comfort us, man. You know what I mean? Christ knows what us as a race of people endure in England and in Rotterdam, man. And in America. And where, my matter of fact, wherever we are, That's Christ right. came to come for us, man. And all right, just to see who knows, how is Christ going to come for us? On chat, uh, like the one. I can't. On, chari on chariots. Um, not quite, none. Hmm? No. It's comfort us. Oh, comfort. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, comfort. Uh, in these scriptures, the scriptures. Let's get it a hand. That, that is it, man. Okay. You know what I mean? It's not going to come and hold you. No, no. Yeah. Meaning, you're going to get comfort. Why? Because you're going to read what the Bible says and understand it, man. That's you're going to be I mean. here knowing Christ is coming from me, man. Yes, I'm suffering now. I'm being oppressed now. But it's not going to be like this forever, man. No. And that's how we get comfort. We get comfort when, you know, when, like, we know, listen, a day's coming where I'm going to be a king, man. I'm going to rule. Right. You know what I mean? We're going to have lands, economics, business, and that's how we get comfort uh, redone. Can another one can. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ash, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of, of priest for a spirit of heaviness. Uh -huh. So meaning what, man? Meaning he's come to turn our sadness into happiness, man. Right. Joy for ashes, meaning we're not going to have more ash on our head. For those of you that, you know, probably don't know, back in the ancient times, to show that you were sad, you would pour ash on your head, man. And Christ right. saying, time's coming where we're not going to pour ashes on our head, man. We're not going to be sad no more. We're not going to be oppressed no more. A time's coming where that ash is going to be gone, and we are going to have happiness, man. Right. Canada, one can. Uh, oh, please. Yes. Excuse me. I lost it, but I got it. Uh, I that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. And there, man. Oh, suck it. And we're going to be the planting of the Lord, meaning we are the people that, you mean that the Lord done this to, man? If you plant something, it's your work, it's your energy, and we are going to be the planted of the Lord, man. Meaning the Lord done this. And that's it, man. Uh, from there, uh, suck it. let me get... There was a little... Oh, okay, um, there was some uh, extra. Yes. I can't. That the that they might be glorified, and then man, that we may be glorified. What does glorified mean? Made good, man. That right. we as a nation may be good. With Christ, He came, died, resurrected, and is at the right hand of God, so that we could be good, man. That right. we could have something. Because if Christ didn't do that, how we're living, it would be like this forever, man. Hmm. There would be no help. There will be no comfort. We will be suffering forever. But Christ came to give us a chance, man. And that's what Sean Bailey needs to understand, man. That we're not just, you know, right. black people that got nothing better to do. Mm. That's right. We are people that want to be heard. We are people that are upset, man. Mourning. Got that's ashes right. on us. And that is the problem. That is the problem, man. And you know what I mean? Sometimes, well, a lot of times, rich blacks don't understand it mm. because they don't go through some of the things that we don't, man. Right. Uh, so, 
uh, crap, you can get me the um, article on um, on um, the brother from um, the chase. We just, we just grab, uh, grab that one as well. So lucky I don't want my phone's about to die. I need to run and get my charger real quick. I got you. No sweat. Right. The chase star Sean Wallace reveals he has experienced racial profiling. So imagine this now. This guy here, he's famous. Um, if you're in the UK, you know, on um, ITV, there's a show called the chase and um this man here he's one of the um what's the name for him what's the like uh, a um, a contender no he's a contender meaning you battle ag against him to win meaning his job is stop you from winning and the chase believe me that's a big show in england and this man is very smart but you know I mean he's very educated you know I mean he's got damn there he knows pretty much a bit of everything, like there's no like honestly from me watching the show, he hardly gets anything wrong. Whether right. it's English history, film history, ancient history, like damn there is damn they got everything you know what I mean patted down, man. And this man, as famous as he is, as educated as he is, he's been racial profiled as well, man. Which uh, I'm gonna say yeah. again, education is good. But education isn't the isn't the key, man. That's right. Why? Because he's educated. If you, you know I me, mean? if you think I'm lying, you think education is the key, man. Mm. That's just some angry black man right there, man. That's yeah. some angry right. black man that don't know what he's talking about. Right. This man is educated, so educated. He's on the show to stop right. people from winning. How right. educated he is. He wouldn't be on there if he wasn't that good. Right. He wouldn't be on that show for all them years. If he wasn't that good, right? And I guess what, he's the best, he's the top man. Meaning, you mean no one hardly beats him. If you win while he's on the show, that shows how good you are, right? Uh, read on the chase star show. Wallace has opened up about being the victim of racial profiling in a new interview. The chase appeared on the Good Morning Britain today, June the 9th, to be that he was. He has been stopped by police numerous times. How many times? Numerous times. Their man stopped by police numerous times, meaning not once. Not once. This man who's famous on TV, everyone watches the show, has been stopped by police numerous times, man. This educated black man has been stopped by police numerous times. A redone. Gone. numerous times including a couple of instances when he was a barrister I imagine that man he was a barrister meaning with this man in court he was you mean I think that's the highest form in court you can be in it that is highest position in court a barrister a solicitor meaning it meaning in um, the court he's the highest man and even while in that role he will stop numerous times, man. Showing what education isn't the key. Right. Serving God is the key. Ed education, right. Ed education is nice. Don't get it. You mean, don't think, you mean, I'm saying don't be educated. Education right. is wonderful, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. But is it the key? No, it's not, man. Because look, this man, he's well educated. He's even a, he's even a Bert Arista. And still, he's been stopped numerous times. Read on. On two occasions, I was coming out of Kingston Court, Crown Court. So imagine this now. Remember, we know what job he used to do. He was a uh, arista, and he came out of the court, man. Kingston Crown Court. Read on. With a solicitor who happened to be white. So now, of course, he's black. The solicitor who he walked out with was white. Huh. Who, now, remember now, the solicitor is under him. A barrister is the highest seat in, in a court. Right. Remember now, the, the, the solicitor is under him. Huh. So, remember, his black solicitor's white. Read on. 
And imagine that man, a barrister, a black man, you know, a barrister, leaving the courtroom with a white man, and a, and then a police officer comes up to him like, "You fit the description of a man in a robbery." Now, you know, I don't know what he was wearing. I'm just having a guess. You know, with the occupation, I'm sure we left him what a suit and tie, man. Right. And, mm. and out of the courtroom. So nine times out of ten, I'm assuming his uniform was you know, a nice, um, you know what I mean, like um, a nice um, suit and tie, and it wasn't enough. Uh, uh -uh. Being a barrister, being educated and wearing a suit and tie, it just wasn't enough for a white officer to come up to him and go, you fit the description of a guy in a robbery, man. It's just not enough. Uh -uh. We showed you that. Regardless of what you do, it comes down to your race. That's right. Bro. As much as you know, people want to deny it, and that like that's not the case. Race does mean something, and we get stopped and harassed because of our race. That's right. And how do you know? This is one of the best examples anyone can give. A, you know what I mean? He's um, a barrister. Left the courtroom with a solicitor, nine times out of ten wearing a suit and tie, and it didn't stop a police officer from going, you match the description of a guy involved in a uh, robbery. Shows that it's not enough. Um, you got something? Deuteronomy 28.16. Curse shall thou be in the city, and curse shall thou be in the field. So there, man, one curse that it doesn't matter who we are, whether, right. you know, you're a rich black man, that lives in the city or a black man who isn't rich and his life is in the field, we are cursed either way, man. Right. Regardless of the, um, uh, this man here, as rich as he is, as educated as he is, he's cursed just like us, man. The right. same way a police officer would come over to me and go, you know, you match the description of, um, of like a thief. Right. It happened to him. Regardless right. of how rich he is, regardless of how educated he is, and why? Because me and him have the same common denominator. We're black. Mm -hmm. We all have the same common denominator. We are black, man. And that's what it comes down to. That's anyone, anyone that, oh, that, that, that was it, pretty much. That was it, pretty much. All right, um, no sweat. Uh, let's get... Uh, let's get Leviticus... 25 and Leviticus chapter 25, verse 35. If thy brother be waxen poor and fallen in decay with thee, then, then thou shalt relieve him. And there you go, man. That's in the Bible. If an Israelite isn't rich and is poor, waxen in decay, man, meaning damn there, his life is just going downhill. It's our job to relieve him, man. Right. That's right. And to, you know, to say that with the protest, it's a disgrace and it's a shame. You know what I mean? You ain't relieving us. A black man in your seat, you're not relieving us, man. You're not going, you know what? Well, if, if they're doing this protest, something must be wrong. From what happened in America, there must be something these black people in the UK are relating to. God. Let me hear it, man. Let me relieve them, seeing as I'm in the house of lords, you know what I mean, running my big mouth every day. L you know what I mean? Let me hear them, man. Let me God. relieve them. Let me see what I can do to stop the police from harassing them. Mm -hmm. 
Let me see what I can do to, you know, stop this police harassment, man. Uh, one second. You mean? Let me see what I can do to relieve a man. And that's the problem. The rich of us don't relieve the poor. Instead, they blame the poor. Like, oh man, you are just, you're just always moaning. Always got something to moan about, man. And that's the problem. Uh, read on. Then thou shalt relieve him. Yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live with thee. And there, man. So now, so, so in this law, you mean, if someone didn't have nothing, they should live with you, man. Why? Because you would have something that they don't. And by the laws of God, it's our obligation to look after him, man. Him or her, hear them, relieve them. But the rich of us, they don't relieve us. They don't even hear us. Instead, they rather blame you. Right. You know, because they got lucky, they look at, they look down on you like, oh man, you know, damn. You know what I mean? It's, it's your fault. It's your fault, man. You, you ain't got the money. You ain't got this. And not knowing that, you know what I mean? We're not poor by choice. We are poor because and we are in an oppressor's hand, like what uh, we read in Psalms 82, man. Uh, we are in an oppressor's hand. It's, it's not, you know, we're just lazy. We're poor because someone wants us poor. Right. We're in debt because yeah. people want us in debt. Uh -huh. These things don't happen by accident. It's not just, you know, coincidence. <laughs> These things happen so that why we don't rise, man. So that all we do is make other nations rich. All uh, we do is help someone else, but we never have nothing for ourselves, man. Right. Uh, read that one more time. Another one, God. And if thy brother be waxen poor and fallen in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him. Yea, though he be a stranger or a, or a sojourner, that he may live with thee. And there, man, that he may live with you, meaning amongst us, anyone who doesn't have, we look after them, man. We hear them. But what happens now, man? Everyone tries to make it seem like you're just complaining. Mm. Uh, the rich black looks at the one who isn't rich and goes, you're just complaining, man. It's disgraceful to protest on the streets. That is shameful, man. And that's the problem. And from there, give me James. Okay. The poor of the world, James. Two and five, James. Two and five, James. <laughs> There's five. Yes, How yeah. can my Salakia James yeah, chapter two, verse five? How can my beloved brethren has not God chosen the poor of this world? And there you go, man. God chose the poor of this world. Many rich blacks, you know, they make it seem like God's with them because they're rich. But that's not the Bible, man. God chose the poor of this world, man. That's God right. chose in Maasai, in Manchester, right. in the ghettos of Rotterdam. Right. God chooses the poor of this world, man. The people that are in that march saying no justice, no peace. They're the people that God picks, man. The poor right. of this world. Read on. Come on, God. Rich, rich in faith. And guess what? Them people that are poor, they're rich in faith, man. Right. Ain't no one got more faith than a poor black man, man. <laughs> right. And too, man. We are poor, but guess what? We are so rich in faith. That's right. We, we believe, man. Mm. Regardless of the suffering... We know that God loves us. Right. The poor are always rich in faith, man. Regardless of whatever happens, there's always a black man like, listen, man, I'm a child of God, man. 
God. As poor as I am, I know God loves me. Mm. You mean the poor of this world, meaning us, we are rich in faith. And look at life. How do you know? How do you know God is with us? <laughs> Everything black people do comes from the poor man. Reggae right. music comes from the poor who? Poor Jamaicans, man. The poor yeah. West Indians. Grime comes from what? Poor Benjamites living in London, man. That's right. Anything great of our right. people, anything that everyone likes, where does it come from? The poor man. Ain't right. no rich man. Ain't nothing come from a rich black man. But it comes from the rich poor, though. It comes from in um, the ghetto. Everything does. Why? Because we are in spirit. In spirit, we are rich, man. Even though we're poor, we make it rich. That's right, man. Anything that we do great, anything that any other nation acknowledges for, where did it come from? The poor man, grime yeah. music in East London, Hackney, man. I don't know if any of you have ever been to Hackney before. It's not a nice place, man. It, it, it's run down, you know, no disrespect. You know I mean, I'm from um, the Midlands, it don't look good neither. I'm not, I'm not you know, acting like I'm from um, the palace, no. but you know, what I mean, you look at it and Guess what? One of the greatest genres to be made in the UK, one of the greatest um, uh, art forms came from there, man. From black people suffering in the That's ghetto, right. and knew them, and to express themselves, came up with grime music, man. Garage music. Mm. Why? Because God is with the poor of this world, man. That's right. And, and if you don't believe me, just look around. Anything great comes from who? People that are poor, man. Reggae music came from who? Poor Benjamites in Jamaica, man. Right. Suffering and what singing about their oppression, man. Singing that dead the Israelites, Christopher Columbus is a liar from your know I mean? That came from who? Of this world, man. Not from the rich. The blues, jazz music came from black people suffering in America, man. Uh, read on. Canada and Khan. Has God not chosen the poor of this world? Rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, and um, the um, heirs of the kingdom, and to be an heir means you're going to partake, meaning That's the right. people that are poor, they're going to partake in the kingdom of heaven, man. Right, they're going to inherit right. the heaven, man. they're going to get the kingdom of heaven while the rich of us laugh at the poor. The, them same people they're laughing at are going to inherit the kingdom of heaven, man. That's right. That's something many of them don't understand. The same people being laughed at, oh, the protests, Black Lives Matter, those same people are going to inherit the kingdom of heaven, man. And how do we know? Yeah. We're reading it in the Bible. We're That's reading right. it in the book of James. Uh, read on. Can I want God, which he has promised to them that love him. And there, man, it is promised unto us that love him, that keep his commandments, man. That's how we love God. You know, right. in religion, they mainly like to say that you love God by how much you sing, how much you roll on the floor. And that's right. not how you love God, man. You love God by obeying. You love God yeah. by keeping his commandments. Uh, read on. Can I run God? But ye have despised the poor. What did the Bible say? But ye have despised the poor. And that's the problem. The rich of us despise the poor. Rich black people despise black people that are what? Poor, man. Right. Talking about you're marching. You know, you know, my granddad would be rolling in his grave if he would have seen what we was doing. Hmm. That's the right. problem. Despise the poor, man. Look down on the poor and be like, oh, gosh, black lives matter. Oh, come on, man. Come on. we got to do something else, man. And that's the problem. Despise the poor. Uh, read on. Do not rich men oppress you. And there, man, rich men, they oppress us. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, James is writing it back then, but it happens now, man. That's the right. The reason why the poor right. voice... The reason why 
the poor black voice doesn't get heard because rich black people don't want it to be heard. Oh, They're too happy making their money and like, you know what I mean? I don't want to offend massa. So you say, you know what, now, man, you can't be heard. I'm going to make sure no one doesn't hear your voice. And that's why, man. And like back then, the rich, who's the rich? The scribes, the Pharisees, they oppressed black people that were poor 2,000 years ago, man. Right. Made sure that no one heard your voice because Rome was paying their bills. Uh -huh. And likewise today, man, in England, no one wants to hear a poor black man's voice. Why? Because Sean Bailey's rent needs to be paid, man. <laughs> David Lammy's rent needs to be paid. So that's uh -huh. why no one can't hear a poor black man's voice because, you know, he's going to mess up my money. Right. He's going to mess up what I've got. So you know what? It's best if I make sure no one hears his voice. Uh, read on. Kano and Khan. And drew you before the judgment seat. Read on. Khan. Do not, do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called. And there, man, they blaspheme God. What does blaspheme even mean, man? To speak evil against. Uh, and that's what the rich do, man. How do they do this? The rich say, God's with me. Uh, and God's not with them. God's with the poor, man. That's right. God's with the people that, you know I mean, are in the ghetto suffering. Uh, and the rich, you know what I mean? He, he picks another God, which is the white man, man. Right. And then on top of that blaspheme... Right. Thinking God's with him, like you know, God's with me, man. Look at all the money I got, look how I'm living, and that doesn't mean anything, man. Riches doesn't mean who God is with, right? Riches don't mean anything, man, and that's the problem. And that's how they blaspheme that name. Uh, read on, Kano and Khan. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor. As thyself, and there, man, well. and there, that is in the Bible. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. What does that mean, man? Love another black man as you love yourself, mm -hmm. right? And guess what? For a black man who is rich that doesn't agree with um, the poor, you would want your voice to be heard. So you know what to do. Love your neighbor as you love yourself, man. Hear right. his voice. Right. Help him, man. Read on. Can one can. But if ye have respect to the to Salakia, but if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin. And there, man, and 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 now that's the problem. Even among some of us, man, we respect people. Why? Because they're rich. Right. We, we we respect him instead of telling him the truth, man, that you sold out, man. Uh-huh. Now, listen, I'm going to just say something right here. There are some black people that are rich and they do care. God. And there's a lot more that don't. Uh -huh. So, you know, so now, what was that? So now here's the problem. Among us, we develop a mind state that, well, God's with you if you're rich. Right. If you got money, then that means God's with you. And we don't. And then guess what happens? People just respect him, not for what he or she does, just because they're rich. Right. People give them a pass because they're rich. People let them go with anything wrong they do because they're rich. And that's the problem, man. A read on. So like you said, um, uh, and sometimes it's also... Uh, what you can get from that person, you know, if you want something, then you will uh, allow them. If you do something bad, you won't speak on it, you know, because you're thinking in your back of your head, I can, I can, you can borrow me money, of uh, you can uh, give me that car, that too, uh, right? Yeah, bang on, that's right, so get it a hand, man. That, that is. Yeah, that's right. You know, what I mean, that's a heavy point. Um, example of that is, you know, for some of you that are probably young, 1995, 1996, there was a rap, 
well, um, uh, a group they were called Death Row. I guess what man, you know what I mean? There was a man called Shoot Knight, and he had all the money, man. And right. you know, people let him get away with stuff. Why? Because he was paying their bills, he was buying them rental cars and all that. And they thought, you know, if I suck up to him enough, you know what I mean? If I just yeah. do it with what his with whatever he wants to do, I mean, I may just get paid a little bit more, man. Right. And it never worked out. Once Death Row Records was done, he took back all the rentals. Anything he gave to any of them men, they had to hand it back. And that's the problem. Now, if they didn't respect him from the jump, they would have been like, nah, Shug Knight, man. You know, I'm not with what you're doing, man. What you're doing is wrong. You can't do this. That is wrong. But because they respected him and thought, you know, yeah, man, you know, he'll he'll um, buy me a car. He'll do this for me. They let him get away with many things. And guess what? In the end, he took it all back anyway. Right. About all the cars. I watch documentaries on it, what people say. And to say that once Death Row Records was done, it took back everything. Mm. And that's the problem. You respect someone thinking, you know, I'm going to get something. And it backfires, man. Uh, it all ends up being thrown in your face, man. Uh, read on. Can I run, can? And are convinced of the law as transgressors. Read on. Can I run, can? For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Meaning, you know what I mean? We got to keep all the law. You can't right. say I keep law but offend at one point. And guess what? You've done it all, man. If you break one law, then you broke all of them. And likewise, yeah. to respect someone, to respect, you know what I mean, someone who's rich, just because they're rich, that is offending the, the um, law too, man. You right. go, hit, you know, I don't want to really chastise him. I don't want to tell him he's wrong. That is breaking the law. And if you right. offend one, you offend them all, man. You break one, you brought all of them. Um, but, but, okay, and that that scripture also deep. See, a lot of people, Christians, read that and say, "See, you can't keep all the law, man. If you right. break one, you break them all." That's not what Paul's saying here, man. That's not Paul. They Paul is speaking to the Pharisees, here, man. And the Pharisees were circumcised. The Pharisees had a long dance with the Greeks. But guess what? The Pharisees were hypocrites, man. So what Paul's saying is, okay, you may be circumcised. You know, okay, you may have nice dark with the fringes, but you're the same people that got, got Christ killed, man. You can't keep some of the law, you gotta keep all the law. That's what he's getting at, man. Christians take the scripture and say, see, there's no point keeping it because if you break one, you break more. That is not the content of it, man. Paul's saying, if you break one, you broke the more. Saying, okay, all right, you may be circumcised, man. Okay, man, you may keep the peace, man. But you're the same people that lied on Christ in court, man. That's what you call very false witness. I mean, it's okay, you keep some right. of the law, you break some others, man. That's what it means. He that offends at one law broke more. That is the context, man. Not saying okay. don't try it. He's not saying, well, you break one, you break more. So you might as well be homosexual. You break one. The point of view that this guy's guys are Christians who are hypocrites, man. You kept some of the law. You were circumcised. You went to Jerusalem on the holy days. But these same people said that we got no king but Caesar, man. And that's against the law in the Bible. It's against the law to put a king over you ain't a black man. And they did that, man. Right. Against the Lord to bear false witness, and they bear false, false witness on Christ. That's what the scripture is saying, man. That's what I mean by you break one, you break more. That's Christ right. Weren't right. Keeping it, man. What is saying in actuality, he's saying different from the Christian church. He boys saying that you must keep more, man. You keep better them. do them. <laughs> boys saying, yeah, you know, you, you no know one's perfect. You break one of them, you break more, so you must have break them. Paul actually, guess what? Keep them all, man. Don't break That's one of them. Good. That's right. That was a good one. <laughs> As what he said, you know, many people read that verse and think it means don't keep the law. When right. from reading it from where we have, it's saying do keep the law, keep it. And matter of fact, you know what? To follow all of them, don't break any of them. That's right. what it's saying in its actuality. You know what I mean? Uh, read on. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. There you go. So now it's giving examples. 
So the Bible says don't commit adultery and also don't kill as well, man. So saying uh, you got to do all of it. You can't uh, say, well, I wouldn't commit adultery, but then take someone's life. You got to keep all of it. Don't uh, kill and don't commit adultery, man. Oh, man like, many rappers will talk about saying drugs killing people, but then charmization uh, are killing people, but then, you know, um, killing a baby, oh, that's wrong, man. We don't want to just too far. You know what I mean? I'm saying the same, the same power that said don't be this law, said don't be that law also, so you got to keep more from that half and half. There you go. You know what I mean? So, as what it's saying, man, you got to keep all the law, not half and half. Not what you like. We got to keep all of it, man. Uh, read them. Right. Now, if thou commit no adultery yet, if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. There, so if you break any, then you know I mean so you can follow one and break another. You are still transgressing the law, man. That's right. Can't make up your own righteousness. Like, well, I don't do this, but I do this. I don't find nothing wrong with this. We got to do it all, man. Mm. And likewise, the rich of us need to help the ones that ain't rich of us, the poor, man. That's right. That is in the Bible. Many people, I follow God. Well, guess what? Help the poor, man. Right. Hear their cry. We just read it in the Bible. We just read the verses, man. But you got to hear the poor of our black people suffering, man. Not mock them and act like, you know, they're so immature. Oh, gosh, hear them, man. And that's the problem. Um, right, let's get the last verse of the day. Uh, do, 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 do. Sorry. All right, let's get Psalms 140 and 12. Psalms 140 verse 12. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the Salakia. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted. And there, man, the Bible says, I know the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted. And that's us, man. We are afflicted, and the right. Lord hears us. While as Society and the and the rest of the earth may not. The God of heaven and earth, He does, man. That's he right. hears us. He hears us and will redeem us, man. Will save us from this affliction as well. Uh, read on. God of God. And the rights of the poor. And the right of the poor, meaning the right, meaning what the poor man knows is right. The Lord's gonna fight for that, man. That's right. What the poor man knows is right and how he's being done wrong. The Lord will fight for that, man. Okay. And that's the problem. When the, when the rich of us try to make little of it, when the rich of us try to make light of it, the Lord sees that, man. And the Lord is going to fight for us. That's right. And we see it every day, man. In the UPK, that's the Lord fighting for us, man. Okay. Fighting for the nation of Israel. Yeah. Okay. And that's something that the rich can't understand, man. They can't understand it. Why? Because they're not around us anymore. They, you, you know, when in their mind, over time, they've developed this mindset that you're just complaining. You know, you know, if I did it, so can you. And not realizing he's lucky. It's not like there's so many. But you can say maybe, you know what? Maybe it is me, man. Maybe, you know, I'm not applying myself. You know what I mean? He's a dime out of a dozen, man. He's not, you know, like one out of a million. But what happens, people forget that, man. People are like, you know, well, damn. You know, if I did it, so can you. Not realizing that he hardly did it him himself, man. Yeah. He barely got there himself. And then what makes it worse, when you talk to them, they admit that they suffered racial abuse. They admit that, you know, now nah, I, I was racially abused, man. They admit it in interviews and then just forget just like that. Right. Forget what they went through just like that, man. 
and that's the problem. You mean they're quick to forget and not realize that? Hang on, if that happened to me, maybe this protest is about the same thing, man. It happened to me, so surely it's happened to them. Instead, nah, nah, that happened to you. You're just moaning. You were just complaining. You know I mean you'd like to complain? That's the problem that we have, and that's how the rich of us think about the poor of us, and that's the problem, right? Th right um, uh, there, man. You know what I mean? And um, Officer Dongabar has done a lecture on this as well, man, that even if you got a black sounding name, you are most likely not going to get bored for an issue. If your name even sounds black on, on a CV, they're not going to call you, man. And then, just say for argument's sake, you had a what you would call a white name, you'll make it to the interview, but, but when they see you, you ain't going to get the job. So uh, you yeah. escape one phase, you only get rejected at the second phase, man. Yeah. And that's right. the problem. And these things happen, and it's not a black myth. It's not some uh, it's not some black ghetto myth. These things do happen, man. Yeah, and you know, yeah. we do have to speak about it. So when um, that's the class, I'm handed over to the priest and officer of five thousand Karafia. Oh, okay. <laughs> One West, one to the future of New York, under commanding General Yana, ruled for a new broker and sister. When a new group of sister comes into the school, they are off limits for six months. They are to be saluted only. They are here to shed themselves of the world. If they need transportation, the teacher will arrange it. After six months, if a brother or sister has an interest in a particular person, he or she must get permission from the head to speak to a brother or sister. There is another six months in which a brother and sister will call each other. After the six-month period, the brother and sister will get permission from the head to marry. Tithe, which is a commandment, Numbers 1821, Malachi 3810, means 10th in the Hebrew, 10% of every penny of any increase the Lord gives you. Give to the treasury department or the teacher. Priest fund, free will offering, not mandatory, whatsoever amount you like to give. Upcoming holy convocations and feast of trumpets. Or after the in the hallway. If anyone wants to be a Jew from the school, start wearing all black, black boots, shirt, pants, headband, and head scarf. Yeah, I mind it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.